Hill Skies. We'd like to invite you to go on a treasure hunt tonight. We'll be using as our map to the buried treasure the Herschel 400 Observing Guide by Stephen James O'Meara, Steve O'Meara. And out of these 400 objects that a, uh, an astronomy club down in St. Augustine, Florida originally curated, out of those 400 objects, we're down to the last 75. So let's dive in and see if we can uh, make, you know, a major hit on these last remaining objects. We, in fact, have already uh, gotten started on uh, stacking frames using electronically assisted astronomy techniques. Uh, stacking frames on the first two objects. We were able to catch them in the same frame. This object over here on the left, let's just zoom in on it a little bit more. This is NGC 3900, a uh, galaxy in LEO, and it's currently at 48 degrees above the horizon. I think you can see some of the structure around this uh, bright core. There are a couple of dust lanes there that we're starting to make out. We've had about 10 minutes, uh, you know, uh, stacking on collecting subframes here, 20 second subframes each at 100 gain. So I think you can already see some of that uh, structure. So we'll start our observation of NGC 3900, one of Herschel's list of the galaxies he discovered. I'm going to say um, we could make out um, the rings and even some dust trails in the middle of the ring structure. Now we'll want to um, pick out our session here. I think, yeah, it's already got us queued up to March. No, it's got us on March 14th. There's March 19th. So that's NGC 3900. Then our second target is over here. I don't know what this is here. It's not on Stellarium. Um, this is our second target, and it's NGC 3912. And NGC 3912 just looks like a oblong blob. That's what we'll call it, an oblong blob. Now in Deep Sky Planner, which is uh, the software used for targeting and also for observing notes, we're going to say oblong blob. Um, once we've set up our first session, it remembers them the rest of the night. So we don't have to keep choosing the session. Oblong blob, a galaxy in Leo. And it's only about 1.5 arc minutes of extent. Arc minutes of extent. Hey, we've got some folks to welcome here. Here's Mike. Uh, Unfortunately, Mike in Atlanta's got some clouds. Stu, welcome. My goodness, you're very faithful. This is the third time this week. <laughs> you're so nice. <clears throat> Stu's saying we're spoiled, but I'm spoiled because you're here, Stu. NGC 3900 is a lenticular galaxy located in the Leo constellation discovered by William Herschel in 1785. It's 95 to 100 light years away. 95 to 100 Mike's wondering if it's 95 to 100 million light years. And Stu says, yeah, that would be a diff bit of difference, eh? And uh, Stu said he just copied and pasted and said, that can't be right. Let's go over and check uh, Omira, see if he says anything about distance. He, on 3900, I don't think he does. Says it's very difficult to see, not convincingly visible even with averted vision. But on 39.12, oh, he says extremely small and dim. Um, this is one of the most difficult objects to see in the Herschel 400 catalog. A dark sky is required, which we don't have. As you can see in our uh, sky view, our sky cam scope there, it's got really a, quite a lot of that glow of the horizon and the light pollution, about Bortle 6 skies. So we don't have uh, pure dark skies. But what we do have is EAA, and that makes up for all kinds of things. 
He says uh, you have to be very patient. Hyperventilate to feed oxygen to your brain and eyes. I can see it. And that's about all he says. Not a lot there. It's going to be a challenge even for those using 10 inch telescopes, he says, if you're in a suburban sky. So be patient. Give this one some time. But, gang, what we've got is electronically assisted astronomy. So we're going to say uh, Omira said that these required oxygen. We would say O2 or EAA. Those would be the chemical um, formulae. Ken, good to have you here. Yeah, Steve, Stu says it's million. Just another wiki mistake. <laughs> Stu, you'll have to propose a correction there, brother. All right, that uh, finishes us up. With these, we're going to go to the next target now and get going. And the next target is NGC 3655. NGC 3655. NGC 3655. And this is a galaxy in Leo as well. I don't know if we're going to be able to do these titles tonight. We're going to try to move so quickly. I wonder if it's even worth trying to do these. NGC 3655, a galaxy in Leo. Galaxy. I hit Clavin Lim. What object is this? We're coming up on, uh, oh, the one that needed oxygen is 3912. Stu says, I wonder if he uses pure oxygen for that effect. Performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> no, he said you just hyperventilate. That's all he said. Mike said, it's a speed run tonight. That's right. We're trying to do 24 if we can. <laughs> you guys are great. All right, so uh, we are plate solving here. And uh, by the way, if you're not familiar, we use a pure tech Telestation 2 Observatory with a Rasa 11, Rho Ackerman Schmidt astrograph, on top of a PureTech adjustable height frame. We uh, have a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro, one shot color camera, fastened to an Octopi Astro uh, camera interface that's hooked to the corrector lens, the corrector plate, you want to call it that, on the front of that Rasa. And then on top of the scope, we have a little, uh, I guess, equipment plate, a Los Mandy equipment plate. You might call it an outrigger. And you can see that we're using a sky cam. It's this view of the sky, about 150 degrees. That's the red camera in front there. It's an ASI 178. And you can also see we have a couple of Pegasus Astro, a power box, and also a USB distribution box there as well. And I don't know why uh, I hate Clavin Lim that you feel like it's unfair, brother. We hope that it's fair because we're doing this as a team sport tonight. So we hope it's fair. And again, NGC 3665. We'll see what Omira has to say about this. We'll see what Stu has to say about it as well. Uh, I, Clavin says all he uses is a 70ED, a Cyboni 305 that has an IMX 20, 290 sensor. Actually, that's a pretty good refractor, the 70ED. Uh, NGC 3655 is on page 129. 129. 3655. Yep, that's about the same picture we have. He says it's extremely small and dim galaxy, uh, difficult to see, think stellar fuzzy. It's a one arc minute wide fleck of hyperfine light. 
use averted vision under a very dark sky. You might see some concentration of light in the core. And that's it. Now let's see if uh, we can pick up anything else. 3686. Let's, uh, let's back off here and say show chart at 36.55. No, we're not going to get 36.86. But we don't miss it by much. It's down here, as you can see. So we'll just drop down, and we won't plate solve on that. This is 81 Leo here. Let's go look at that. Drop here for a second. This. Down here at the bottom, this is 81 Leo. Stu, what do you got to us about this? 3655. I've gone over my internet gigabit plan because of this channel. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 12 hour live streams will do that. <laughs> you guys are funny. Uh, they're, re they're referring to the um, um, Messier Marathon we did this past Tuesday night. <laughs> anyway, this is a one arc minute wide fleck of light. Stu says, can't find anything. Spiral Galaxy Leo. 20 megaparsecs away. Huh. 20.8 mega million parsecs. I think if I remember right, a parsec is about three light years. In fact, I wonder why do we even use parsec? Why don't we just keep saying light years? It's such a crazy idea to me. Well, I think maybe um, Herschel just thought this was cool to have invented his own uh, galaxy here. Let's um, drop down to 3686. Not going to be a lot of movement here. You can see just slight movement. Just slight movement. We'll try to do this without plate solving. And this is NGC 36. 86, NGC 3686, and we'll see, um, thirty-six eighty-six. extremely difficult barred spiral, it's, um, you're going to have to use extreme patience, take your time, any light pollution at all will erase this dim ornament from our skies. Extremely faint glow. 1.5 arc minutes. Core is faint and ill-defined. Just a butterfly's breath of light with no concentration. How does he think of these phrases? A butterfly's breath of light. Well, there you see it in the middle there. It's a butterfly's breath of light. Omira called it a butterfly's breath of light. Any, quote, any light pollution will erase this from our skies. That's sad, isn't it? What do we got, Stu? Spiral of forms with three other spiral galaxies. Huh. Spiral with NGC 3681, 3684, and 3691, a quartet of galaxies in Leo. None of those other galaxies are on our Herschel list, though, so I guess Herschel didn't discover them. Let's back off here a little bit and see them. Right away we can see, oh, maybe that's one. Let's go over to, uh, there 
3686. Yep. So 3686 is the one on the left of the, what would this be called? A cross bow, maybe? Here's the end of the crossbow, and there's the, the cross. So here's 3686. The next one would be 3684. Here in the middle is 3684. The next one would be 3681. Here on the right side of the crossbow, and here in the back is 3691. Four galaxies in one frame. Well, that's three minutes. That's how fast we're gonna try to operate tonight. Discovered March 14th, 1784. Wow, it's March 19th. We did this as an anniversary. The poetry comes from many hours sitting around under the sky. Pixel scale, sorry, but not pixel resolution. A dandelion. <laughs> Mike, you think of the most picturesque names. All right, here we go. Next object is 4150. 4150. NGC 4150. Boy, it's just inky black out there tonight. There's absolutely no moon at all. Three dozens of galaxies behind 3686? Rats, we already left it. 4150 is an elliptical galaxy located approximately 45 million light years away in the constellation, constellation Coma Berenices. It was discovered by William Herschel on March 13, 1785. Okay, so this is 30, no, 4150. 4150, a galaxy in Coma Berenices. Coma Berenices, March 13, 1785. Wonder how many years Herschel observed to be able to discover all these. I think he discovered 2,500 galaxies and nebulae and clusters. I see it there in the middle. In our sequence, we have it set so it doesn't release control, the camera controls, until the whole thing is done. All right, there she blows. Another tiny butterfly's breath of a galaxy. <laughs> butterfly's breath. What kind of breath does a butterfly have? Uh, tiny. 4150. 45 million light years away, Stu says. 4150. 176. Almira says, well, I don't think it's on. Make sure I got that right. 4150, 176. 4150. Oh, there it is. Sorry. 
very small, very dim lenticular galaxy. Fortunately, it has a condensed core. Uh, slightly out of focus star. That's what it looks like. A verge vision, round and reasonably bright. The halo is thin and grows suddenly brighter towards the center, though not to a star-like nucleus. You can see it in a larger scope as a disk elongated northwest to southeast. And that's what we have. Elongated disk. It's elliptical, 45 million light years away. What kind of technology would they have in 1780 to see these? That is, the sky would be darker without city lights. I think the sky was darker, but the other thing is, Herschel did have a homemade 18-inch telescope. And 18 inches is pretty good aperture, but then again, it was a homemade ground mirror. I'm sure he was constantly improving it, but boy, I think it's pretty clear that Caroline must have had great eyes. That's what I'm thinking. And Herschel, like William Herschel got all the credit, but Caroline must have had the great eyes. All right, we're on to the next target, gang. Three minutes apiece, we hope, on average. The next target is NGC 2974. NGC 2974. 2974. And this is a galaxy in... Boy, it's just so weird when you see the three-letter abbreviation of this constellation. 2974. 2974, page 84. The name of the constellation is Sextans. 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 I don't think they should have used the first three letters by default because that's just weird. Sextons. We're gonna we're gonna use the whole name when we say this constellation. Okay, that's a new rule. Emerald Hill skies. We're always gonna use the entire name because your comments will get censored by the YouTube um, algorithms if you try to abbreviate this constellation. Uh, Twenty nine seventy four is uh, also cataloged in NGC twenty six fifty two. You mean it's both? What? It's a lenticular galaxy located in the constellation. Sextans it is located at a distance of 90 million light years away. Ricky, welcome from Florida. You logged on exactly at the right time. I need a drink. Um, let's see. Omira says... It's a small and faint galaxy in sextants. A little more, and he tells where it is. You might not be able to see it in small scope. It's extremely close to a 10th magnitude star. I, I think we can already see it there, can't we, gang? It is to that star. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> a 10th magnitude star lies next to the galaxy, thus making a challenge for a challenging object at low magnifications. Um, a significant distraction, Omira says. Uh, at 72 power, the galaxy is more defined displaying a star-like core with a tight and rather obvious circular core. I could not detect any elongation. Well, we're seeing it 11 inches, Mr. Romero. The larger telescope should show the three arc minute long galaxy elongated 
northeast and southwest. Does anyone know this, what the scientific purpose was for Herschel to catalog, catalog thousands of faint objects? Well, it was like discovering the new world, right? And by giving him identification numbers, we could start studying all of them. Boy, look at that, right beside that star. So we're gonna say here, tiny, dim, faint <laughs> galaxy located exactly beside a 10th magnitude star. Um, 90 million light years away. Jaffo, good to see you. By finding them in 1,785 generations, 1,785 generations have studied them since. Good points, too. Now, there you see that 10th magnitude star. For context, we're currently looking south, southeast. We've got uh, Leo here. This uh, backwards question mark looks like a lion. And it almost looks like Leo, Leo is looking down on this. Boy, these constellations I don't know as well. Sextons, Crater. Antlia, Pyxis. Oh, gotta learn these guys. I'm gonna study the constellations. I'm gonna do it. Well, anyway, there you go, guys. There it is. Herschel's NGC 2974. Three minutes, 40 seconds. We're out of here. And the next object is NGC 4245. NGC 4245. I did put the uh, list of objects in the uh, description below, the show notes or whatever you call it. 4245. So you can kind of follow along. Ray, good to have you here. <laughs> Late to the party. <laughs> Was it you, Ray, that once said, looks like all the usual suspects? <laughs> Good to have you here, Ray. Jaffo, where are you observing from, Jaffo? I forget. Rick, he's from down in Florida. We're galloping along. Okay, those have settled. This is uh, 4245. 4245 on page 175. 175. 4245. It's a very small and dim lenticular galaxy west of 4274. Oh my goodness. JM. Long time no. Good evening from the Ozarks. Good evening from the Ozarks. Slew baby slew. Inflation adjusted slew chain in charge. <laughs> Thank you so much, JM. If you aren't looking at the comments, JM just did one of those super chats. He pitched in $6.50. Uh, he always looks at it as a cup of coffee. I look at it as a bowl of soup for the people over in southern Turkey and northern Syria to be able to survive after that earthquake. 400,000 people left completely homeless, uh, over 50,000 lives taken, and uh, that $6.50 is going to go a long way over in that area. So thank you so much, JM. Appreciate it so much. Dayton, Jaffo says. That's right. All right, we're getting ready here on 4245. I think I hear a train whistle way off in the distance. The 
several galaxies in this view. Let's be sure and look and see if we're picking up any more. But the one that we're studying now is right here, 4245. And let's show a chart on that. For orientation, it's due east. And it's up about uh, 43 degrees, so halfway to the meridian. Here's the meridian. And uh, near Coma Berenice's cluster. So here's Coma Berenice's um, constellation. There's Leo, got our back to Leo now. And we're underneath the curved handle of the Big Dipper. So here we've got 4245, 4274, 4278. Looks like we missed 4251. So we're going to get three for the price of one here. 4245 is going to be in the middle. And then there will be one off to the left, 4253. We'll drop straight down to 4274 and over to 4278. So let's have a look at those. Right. So this is forty two forty five here. That's forty two fifty three. That's just a little bit unsettling, isn't it? After, after sharp cap makes the adjustment in plate solving, the deep sky image annotation is a little bit off, and it's just a little bit jarring to have it be off like that, isn't it? So you almost have to plate solve again without resyncing, and that gets the deep sky image annotation relinked with the image. Forty-two forty-five. This is 4253, there's 4274 and 4278. Several other galaxies here in the picture. But the ones we're interested in, 4245, 4274, 4278 are the ones on Herschel's list. So first, 4245, barred lenticular. Hey, we can see the bar already. So like we always say, guys, Emerald Hill Skies is a dry channel. You can't make any use of this bar except to look at it. But there it is. You can see the bar across this way. Barely, barely, barely. Barely, I say, into the... So let's do this add observation deal. Let's say barred lenticular with a ring Oh my goodness, was I not on? Sorry. <laughs> so this is in the middle. Uh, 42, see, 4245 barred lenticular. And extremely dim. Says it looks just like a slight fuzz. So that's 42.45. The next is 42.74. And 42.74 is, you just drop straight down to right here. Oh, that's nice structure on this. Man, after we're looking at that, those tiny ones, this is beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. This has inner rings and outer rings. Looks like you threw a rock in the pond. At 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Of integration, we could easily make out a set of inner rings and a separate set of outer rings. Beautiful. Though still somewhat faint. (laughs) 
Die Kreis. Puck, puck. 4278, a small but obvious elliptical. Easy to identify because it has small and condensed 12th magnitude companion. Oh, to the northeast. I guess that must be this, this star, he's saying. Two arc minutes round glow that gradually then suddenly brightens toward the center. Larger scale telescopes should show the halo as a slight ellipse oriented northeast to southwest. I think this is a beautiful galaxy. Let's do a little close-up screenshot of this. I think those stars give it a nice context, too. This is... NGC 4274 at six minutes on 2023 03 19. That's just a neat set of rings, isn't it? Barred spiral at a distance of about 45 million light years. 45 million light years. 95,000 light years across. Look at this star out there by the outer ring. I don't know if that's foreground or if it's in the galaxy, but it sure is neat, isn't it? All right, then our last galaxy is over here. Must be here. And this is 4278. 4278. Looked like a blob. 4278. No. I thought we already looked at 4278. Is that the one we already... Oh, I haven't even written about this yet. Nice set of rings. Ring in a ring. Beautiful. Um, 4251, sorry. 4251... This is a small but relatively conspicuous lenticular galaxy. Uh, think elongated fuzzy star. Are we on the right thing here? Let's back out. Uh, maybe we weren't on the right. Uh, it looks like we were. Yeah, 4278. I guess so. Not elongated too much, mostly just blob-like. Brightens toward the center. Halo, slight ellipse. Yeah, he does say slight ellipse. Light ellipse blob. Folks, welcome back. What you got on uh, 4251, Stu? Ray observed that the distance and scale, distance and size of objects in space is mind blowing. Agreed, Ray. Well said. 4251. Hmm. 
4302. It's not part of the Herschel list, Stu, sadly. Herschel must have, I mean, at least it's not part of the 400, I don't think, is it? It's not close to us, sadly. Okay, off we go. Next is um, 4314. Forty-three, fourteen. And this is, uh, Coma Berenices, a galaxy in Coma Berenices, and 4314, let's take a look at this, NGC 4314, also east. Wasn't that far away, was it? Forty-four fourteen. Here's forty-four fourteen. I wonder if we can pick up both of these in the same frame. Did we already start stacking? We did. Might as well re Oh look no forty three ten is not on the Herschel four hundred. So let's just do that star. Current object slew. Now you'll see the Rasa come right there. That's the indicator of what we're looking at. And then over here, let's uh, clear the livestock and start with a new, a new exposure. There it goes. Folks, we had our first clear skies in Melbourne for about two months over the weekend. Did my first successful galaxy imaging with your Mead LX85 8-inch ACF, nice, of M104 and NGC5128, nice. Is the LX85 a kind of uh, SCT, it's like a schmidt cassegrain or is that a pure refractor? Man, if that's a refractor, that's a monster. Surely that's an SCT. Boy. Oh, it's because we didn't center it. Remember, we made our frame so we'd be able to see both of these. So the one on the left is 4414. The one on the right is 4314. So let's start with 4314 up here. Look at that. Looks like at one time or another that was probably thought to be a supernova. 4314, 4314 is on 175, it's a somewhat small low surface galaxy northeast condensed core, large diffuse halo, huh, 
three arc minute wide oval, bright starlight core, large and diffuse halo, sharp ring-like structure. Larger scopes may see the barred spiral galaxies, two sweeping arms, which form a letter S around the center oval. Do you guys see this starting to be a little whirly gig S here? Can you see the S? Let's pump up the mids a little bit, see if you can see the S any better. At two minutes, you're already seeing this S. Very, very, very slight S. At two minutes, 20 seconds, we could just start making out the bar, barred structure like a uh, letter S. There was a star adjacent to one of the swirls. I'm not sure if it might be a foreground star or something formed from the um, ring structure. Bright core, 4214, I'm sorry, 4314. Got anything on 4314, Stu? Book says yes, SCT, F10 makes live focusing, makes live focusing a challenge, I bet. Don Kornstrom, Don Kornstrom, good to have you here. Where are you observing from, Don? Just thought I would pop in for a few, say hi. Hit the like, etc. That's very kind. I can see the letter S, Don says. The next object is across the frame right over here. And it is a very lively 4414. This looks like one of those uh, galaxies that they call a uh, what, a starburst galaxy or something with lots of star formation? Looked like a lively spiral galaxy after just four minutes, 40 seconds. Looked like the typical starburst category with lots of star forming region regions. Centaurus A. No, I don't think so. Books. Stu, yes, one of our special southern hemisphere objects. Right. This is a beautiful galaxy. Look at the complex string structure. This is 4414. Let's sneak out real quick here and say uh, NGC 4414 Wiki. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Man. Look at all that star formation going on there. Every little one of those blue areas, those are all recently birthed stars from gases and particles that have come together. And then the brownish areas, brownish orange, these are du uh, dust and soot that's kind of covering up the the rest of the ring structure. But look at this beautiful, looks like something right out of a Star Trek movie, doesn't it? Wow. NGC 4414. Boy, that's a beauty. 
right here. You're seeing it live right here. All the dust. It almost looks like in our image, more of a three-dimensional object, doesn't it? Looks like we can see a halo above here. So again, we got a two-for-one special with 43-14 here, 44-14 there. Very isolated, without signs of past interactions. Despite not being a starburst galaxy, it shows a high density and richness of gas. Wow, Stu, you found exactly what I was talking about. So it is not a starburst galaxy. Image by the Hubble, part of AS, AS, HST's main mission to determine the distance of galaxies. Again in 1999, as part of the Hubble Heritage Project. Looks like I'm driving at night without my glasses. <laughs> Cool. All right, that's it. Let's uh, hit the trail, guys. Um, next is 4448. Let's say incredible Hubble view showed amazing star formation. But according to Stu was Oh my goodness, my caps lock key just locked down. No wonder they call it the caps lock key. What? I'm going to have to get my pocket knife out. It's locked! Everything else is going to be in caps tonight, guys. Was not a star burst. Okay, the next galaxy is Home of Renesis again, due east. And I don't know if we're going to be able to get 3810. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's eyesighted here. Okay, 4448 it is. Today there's a great gif of a huge solar tornado, March 20th. Hit shift. Yeah, but you want me to hold the shift key down and unshift the shift? I'm going to try to use a paper clip here to pry it up. There it goes. Okay, so just nobody use the caps lock key from now on. Okay, it's off. Now I have to pry it up again. So the rest of my life, wherever I travel, I'm always going to have to take a paper clip with me in case I hit the caps lock key by accident. <laughs> That's crazy. This is 4448. And it's in also in Coma Berenices. Lucky it was facing the other way. Give it a whack, Doug. <laughs> Very few things in life we can't fix with a whack, right? It's a barred spiral with a prominent inner ring structure. There was a CME on March 13th. They say it was bigger than the Carrington event. CME. You guys told me what this was a couple weeks ago, and now I'm having trouble remembering. Corona something event. Mass. So is this the thing here in the middle? 
that is the thing. It's MGC 4448. Says a barred spiral with a prominent inner ring structure. Ken, try unplugging and plug it back in. <laughs> While you guys are online, <laughs> time to clean the keyboard, I'd say. I bet you're right. You know, Seems to me like I spilled milk on this recently. I bet that's what's done it. So how will I get that cleaned inside of that caps lock key? I guess you shouldn't cry over spilled milk, but I probably will be inclined to. It happened on the far side. Huh. Barred spiral. This is 4448. Forty four, forty eight on one seventy three. A small dim galaxy, star like core, shouldn't be too difficult to see, especially at moderate magnification. It's a small spindle of faint fuzzy light with a star like core. Yep. Spindle is elongated, nucleus stands out first. Faint uniform ellipse of light with a dim inner lens. Gradually gets brighter toward the center. Fuzzy nucleus. Fuzzy nucleus. Curtis, welcome. Coronal mass ejection. That's it. So sorry. <laughs> Coronal mass ejection. Curtis, it's going okay. We're kind of on a campaign to see how many of these we can cover in one night. We have 75 galaxies left to go, and we're going to cover as many galaxies as we can tonight. Uh-oh, Stu's caps lock key was broken for a second, too. I bet it's some kind of virus that was spread via my computer over YouTube, Stu. All right, on to the next galaxy, guys. The next is 3810. A little bit of movement there. Sympathy caps lock, Ray says. <laughs> Don Kornstrom. I like that last name. It sounds like some kind of a scientific measurement. NGC 3810. Uh-oh. Wire moving. Oh, because we had a plate solve. Never mind. Can still spill milk on a Mac keyboard and it costs more to replace. <laughs> 3810. 128. I see it. Nice. 
That is a nice spiral ring already. This is in Leo. Thirty-eight ten. Small but somewhat dim galaxy for small telescopes, but a bright object for larger scopes. Any light pollution will certainly wash it out in a small telescope. Soft oval glow, about two arc minutes. It's a wide amorphous smudge of pale light with a ghost-like appearance. If you use averted vision, you can see a tiny brightening at the center. Larger telescopes show the core to be more concentrated with a somewhat triangular shape with averted vision. Triangular shape, I guess. This must be what he's calling a triangle. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? You can see an arm coming out here and another one coming out there. It's like a string trimmer for lawn care. Thirty-eight ten. Here's the string trimmer galaxy. There's one string, there's another string, and then here's a third string. My goodness. Okay, I just got to pause and say, Lord, you sure did a good job on all this beauty. Look at this. Every one of those stars is an individual sun. This is a live view again. Man. Just makes you want to say, anybody down there? 3810. It's a spiral and Leo. 50 million light years away, 60K light years across. Curtis is trying to get Tiago to join us for a meeting. Don Kornstrom, lovely dust in that one too, you're right. Well, I'm out, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by, Don. This is beautiful, after four minutes. Okay, we're out of here. Next stop on our treasure hunt is NGC 4656. 4656. This is in um, Canis Venatici. Let me shrink this back down. Sorry that's blinding you. <laughs> Mike says it's a Cooler looking galaxy, he wants to move. A supernova was spotted in 3810 last year, cool. 4656 56 and 57. It's the crowbar galaxy, wow. 
That's cool, isn't it? Also known as the Fishhook Galaxy. 4657 is the Fishhook Galaxy. The Crowbar Galaxy. So are these two galaxies. Highly warped barred spiral galaxy located in constellation Canis Venetici, sometimes informally called the Hockey Stick Galaxies or the Crowbar Galaxy. And this is 4627, which is not in the Herschel 400, but that's the whale galaxy. It's got that little side fish like a whale has. We're mainly interested in 4656 and 57. Hockey stick or crowbar galaxy. Nice. These are awesome treasures, aren't they? Wow! Here's that whale galaxy with a little side fish eating the stuff off the, the side of the whale. But this is the 465657. Must have merged with NGC 4657 to form the warped shape. This is the whale and the pup, yes. <laughs> Stu said, I just did screenshot. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. My feet were a little bit cold. It's uh, 21.9 degrees out there. 21.9 degrees. Uh, right there live, 21.9 degrees out there. But in here, it's a comfy 72, but cold feet. Incredibly cool shape like a fish hook, sort of. Well, it's like no other galaxy. Look at all that star formation. 4656. Sorry, that's blinding. Um, Yep. Look at that. Live view again. Wow. Look at all these stars, bright stars showing up here. I don't think those are foreground stars. I think that's really in the galaxies. Whale and pup nearby. That's NGC 4631. Forty six thirty one. What I'm doing is adding this NGC 4631 lookup. 
found it. And then we can do an observation of this too. Oh, we've already imaged it twice. First, back in March of 2021, first target after learning first lessons of autofocus with APT and Nina, and then 4630, oh, then April 7th, 2022, almost a year ago, Extremely bothersome clouds kept modeling our tracking ability. So we can say came here because of NGC forty six fifty six, but while here Love the whale and pup. Great image. 20 Celsius. <laughs> That's like 69 degrees Fahrenheit. That's extremely comfortable. That's awesome. There's the whale. Look at all that star formation. Very cool. All right. On the road again. On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Do 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 do. 4494. Forty-four ninety-four. At least we have a artwork of this one. Forty-four ninety-four is a <laughs> a new list, Doug. Things to come back to and stack longer. Yep. Ray says, "Keep those galaxies clicking. You're doing great." <laughs> what do we know about forty forty-four ninety-four, guys? Forty-four ninety-four. Forty-four ninety-four. One seventy-eight. Small, somewhat bright elliptical, Coma Berenices. Round patch of light, slightly brighter center. Circular glow, like a dim comet with a diffuse and slightly brighter central condensation. <clears throat> Elliptical, thanks, Stu. 45 million light years away, 60k light years across, according to Stu. This star is really close here, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah. 4494. So this is the star that's close by. 
And it's another oval blob, isn't it? Herschel never got tired of oval, oval blobs. Herschel loved oval blobs. Forty two seventy five, forty seven twenty five. Sorry. It might be. It, it's just we're doing the Herschel four hundred. So if it's on the Herschel four hundred, it's there. All right, off we go. Next, 3640. Oh, did you guys not see that one? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will make a stronger effort to remember this. 3640. What I'll start doing is going back to it right here in my muscle memory. I need to make new muscle memory for that. 3640. Nuclear dust ring on 4494. Wow, that sounds scary. All right, so Curtis is going to check and see if 4725 is on the Herschel list. I don't see it right in front of us. 3640. Wow, several here. But nothing else that we're looking for. This is cool. It's kind of a orangey color. Good, forty-seven twenty-five. What if we've already done it then? Okay. Thirty-six forty. After one minute, it looked like a round blob. Small, fairly bright elliptical, extremely difficult to see, not convincingly visible, hyperfine hyper glow between two dim stars. See the two dim stars? One right there and one right there. That's it. <laughs> Ken Allen writes, Space, the final frontier. These are the images of the Space Telescope Emerald Sky. Its mission, to seek out new galaxies and rediscover old. 
You're right, Ray. It doesn't show much structure at all on this one, does it? We're losing a little bit of our focus. I'm afraid we're going to have to go clean that up. Okay, let's do hurry back. Fuzzy, foggy, glow. Next stop is How are we doing on our objects, guys? 3521. For context, this is the bubble galaxy, by the way. We're looking uh, south, southeast, right above my window from where the observatory is. That's, uh, there's the south wall of the observatory, and there's my window over the office where I'm sitting. Right there. Okay, so we're up about uh, 38 degrees, and it's the bubble galaxy. Not bubble gum, just bubble. Bubble galaxy. Wow, that's got a good ring structure to it. Look at that. Beautiful. 35. 21 35 21 127 bright and relatively large spiral faint splotch of light Spindle of light or in a northwest to southeast in a rich field of dim suns. It is a pleasing sight, bright and obvious. With a vertivision, it appears comet like. At 72 power, the galaxy is a much more complex sight, though all the details are delicate. The nucleus appears sharp and bright, yes. An oval co coma surrounds it, yes. Southeast side of the galaxy is also sharply defined, has what appears to be an arm reaching out from the center like a bar. Inner disk is warped and mottled, but these latter features are subtle. Beautiful. Looks like there's also some structure out here. This is NGC 3521. 
flocculent intermediate spiral. That's amazing. Flocculent intermediate spiral located around 26 million light years from Earth in the constellation Leo. Constellation Leo. Flocculent intermediate galaxy stew. 26 million light years away. The bar structure is difficult to discern, both because it has a low ellipticity, ellipticity and the galaxy is set at a high inclination of the line of sight. Also has a satellite traveling through it. Oh wait, that's just our frame. This is an amazing sight. Even after just three minutes, 40 seconds. Looks like Star Trek Nebula. Klingons, right? Flocculent, patchy with discontiguous viral arms. Beautiful. Next is For uh, context, this is south, this is east southeast, and we're up uh, 37 degrees. Right, so we could have gotten this barely in the same frame as 4394, that would have been a lot cooler. Guess we'll move. If we can get it in the same frame as 4350, let's try it. There goes the Rasa. And then let's. Um, As soon as that gives us control back, let's restart the live stack. Lots going on in this frame, guys. 4293 is our first target. And 4293 is the one upper left, I hope. It didn't skate out of the frame. Should be up here. Let's do um, solve only and look to be sure. Ken, 
we will always see more of the northern sky. Um, the North Pole is at about, I think, 38 degrees up. So the whole sky has shifted so that when we look at the celestial equator, it's tilted so that we don't see 38 degrees of the South Pole. Thanks, guys. Um, OK, so deep sky image annotation. So here's 4293 in the upper left. Let's look at it first. 4293 is way up here. And then we'll have to go focus. Look at these starting to be donuts. So that's 4293. Lenticular and Coma Berenices. Lenticular and Coma Berenices. That's it. The next one is 4394, just down here, underneath M85. So it's right here. I'll take that image annotation off. So this one right here. 4394. Yeah, 4394. 168. Moderately sized, somewhat dim, faint round diffuse glow. Core is elongated. Surrounding disk is diffuse and irregular. A mishmash of both light and dark patches. He's talking about this down here. This is 4394. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Wow! Look how you've got this huge dark lane here and a huge dark lane there. And now let's go back and see that's what we are seeing. Huge dark lane on both sides of this. Barred spiral, 39.5 million light years from Earth. So this, this is like the bar here in the middle. And then look how you see this dark dark lane parallel with the bar kind of. Now look here. There's the bar and then you see two dark lanes parallel with the bar. It's beautiful. And then forty-three fifty.
Oh, I think this is off the frame. Not in the same frame. Forty three fifteen here. Okay, let's go to that current object. We're on that star. It's really beautiful. This is 4315. Forty three fifteen. Too many objects for that caption. We're skating a little bit fast for that caption tonight, aren't we? Wonder how many objects we've done. I could figure it out here, I guess, because I could say run, couldn't I? Yeah, and 43 is still there. So we have 50 left to go. Let me take the horizon out of the picture for a second. And then rerun. 55. So we've done 20 objects, I think. Let's put the horizon back in and run again. We have 20 minutes left. So we will make 24 objects tonight for sure. 4350 is next. Look at this over here, the blow dryer galaxy. <laughs> M100. Forty-three fifty and forty-four fifty. Forty-four. Ah, I see. Forty-three fifty and forty-four fifty. We're on forty-three fifty. Sorry, Stu. <laughs> Floating somewhere in space, Ray says. We're up for forty-three fifty.
funny how those did not clear. There we go. Now let's reset. Okay, so 4350 should be at the top. Yeah, this is 43. Look how many galaxies are visible in this frame. 4350 is up here, 4450 is down here. So 4350 here. Small but concentrated lenticular galaxy. Bright and moderately large and elongated, elongated galaxy located in Coma Berenices, visible in the same field with 4340. Mm -hmm. Bright, moderately large. Elongated dark skies helped. Hi, Dean. Where are you observing from, Dean? And then forty four fifty is down here. frame as 4350. Uh, 4450 small but fairly bright spiral, bright oval glow, bright circular core, star-like nucleus surrounded by an eye-shaped inner lens and a diffuse outer halo. Might see spiral structure in larger scopes. I think we are seeing that spiral structure look. It looks like we're just starting to see a little whirly gig S. This is 4450 NGC. 4450, right, that's what we're seeing, just a whirly gig S, really cool dust lanes, really fine glow, huh? Very cool. Okay, it's 12.15. I really think it would look prettier if we finished with a finer focus. Let's go focus real quick, just because it's getting to be so donut laden. Jaffo, it's incredible that Herschel was able to pick these out in the 1780s. 
Hard to believe the optics were capable in that time period. And Ray reminds, not as much light pollution. True. But it's still pretty crazy that he made a homemade 18-inch telescope and did all this, right? From on top a hotel rooftop in Paris. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, that was messy. Herschel was from Bath, England. And you know, Bath was not as close to London. Not as big of a city back then. So yeah, I bet the skies were pretty dark. At night, everybody would turn off their gas lamps and everything, right? It would be fun to see what the light pollution was like. Jaffa said, but still, Herschel didn't have any stacking abilities, nor the power of computers to resolve them. It's mind-blowing, you're right. He had really good eyes, and so did Caroline, apparently. So we're using Nina now, nighttime imaging and astronomy, and it has a really great plug-in, Hocus Focus plug-in, and uh, it's all automated. You guys have seen this plenty of times before, I think. It basically takes a reading on the half-flux radius of the stars with the focuser in a certain position, and it starts moving off to one direction and it moves a little bit takes another reading moves a little bit takes another reading until it feels like it gets enough of a momentum going that it knows that it's not going to get any lower reading of half flux radius and then it goes the other direction and so what you get is a bottoming out of a parabola kind of shape And this is all done with the Hocus Focus plugin and Nina, which is all free software. It's amazing. Herschel discovered Uranus in 1781. I think the Hocus Focus plugin is the best in the world. See how it's starting to bottom out now. And now it'll start going the other direction until it figures out that it's just going to keep going up, 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 up. Pretty reliable most of the time and pretty fast. And I do uh, two readings at each location and then it uh, uses a algorithm to figure out which is the more reliable reading. Sort of averages in between them. I think it's kind of like ninja magic. Herschel pioneered the use of astronomical spectrophotometry using prisms and temperature measuring equipment to measure the wavelength distribution of stellar spectra. <sighs> In the course of these investigations, Herschel discovered infrared radiation. It's faster than regular focus, I think, for sure, Ray. But more importantly, it's more accurate for me. I don't know what it's like on other scopes, but of course, you have two Rosses, Ray. You have a Rasa 11 like this, you also have a Rasa 8. I think it'll be more exacting on both. And it's done. So now we go back, we drop that equipment again. And we're back in business focused. Pick our, up our camera again in the sharp cap and go to the next target. Let's drop back to uh, full frame and let's see, do we finish 4450? Now let's hit. 4216, Galaxy of Virgo. 4216. 
bet that's it right there. Show chart. Where's 4216? It must be the Silver Street Galaxy. It is a Silver Street Galaxy. And we're going to go to 4419 next, which is not in the same frame. Field of view, I should say. 4216. <laughs> yep, yeah, right there. Twenty seconds, one hundred. Yeah, I thought the out of focus and sharp cap also was not as uh, automated, not as reliable. On several fronts, it just doesn't compare yet. But I figure eventually Robin will catch up with Hocus Focus. For right now, it is really worth going there. Hocus Focus leaves Sharp Cap in the dust when it comes to automated focus for Rasa. Forty-two sixteen. The um, Silver Streak. The Silver Streak Galaxy. Metal Rich. Intermediate spiral, one of the largest and brightest of the Virgo cluster. Just installed a sharp cap update, lots of new features. Yeah, I usually try my best to refresh every software every single observing night. So you guys are always seeing the latest version of everything. Um, I'm usually, you know, at the house watching some basketball game or something that my wife wants to watch. She's big on March Madness right now. And in the hour before I come, literally the hour before I come, I'm refreshing every single software. So you guys always get the latest. 55 million light years away, nearly edge on. Bright core, bright inner rings. This is forty two sixteen, forty two sixteen, one seventy. Huh, he calls it a small but bright and highly inclined galaxy. Bright and beautiful, five arc minute long silver streak oriented northeast to south southwest. The edges sharpened to a knife edge. Northern half of the lens is going to be brighter. Sure shows a bright core, one that is tack sharp and extremely luminous. Core seems to burn through the surrounding soft and smooth spindle the ends of which gradually taper to a point, or so it seems, the center of a white egg-shaped core beyond which extends the oblique and dynamic lens. The galaxy's dust lane. See, I think we're seeing that dust lane pretty clearly. See this dust lane here? Yes. That's looking really nice, isn't it? Look at 
that dust laying there. This is a really impressive galaxy. This is a good one to end on. Boy, this went fast tonight, didn't it? From 10.30 to 12.30, and bam, it's 12.28. As always, if you like content like this, I hope you'll click subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything if you want to click the thumbs up or like. If you'd like to be alerted, we usually create the video ahead of time, the placeholder for it, and you'll get a um, notification when we do that. So you can click the bell if you click the notification bell. Um, we're indebted to all of you that do these observations with us because it's like we're a team now. All these guys you've been hearing about, people like Stu and Dean and Ray and Jaffo, all these folks, uh, Mike, uh, Ken, all of you guys that have peeked in tonight and helped us, Bokes, Ricky, Curtis, Don, you guys form part of this community and we observe together so that astronomy is no longer a solo sport like trying to golf or something. Now it's a team sport like a soccer team and we're all working together. Once again, we got to say thanks to God for making these beautiful images like NGC 4216. Thanks to William Herschel for fighting with an 18 inch homemade telescope to find all this stuff for us. And we'll refresh this now. Uh, we'll finish up our, our observation of 4216. And then what we'll do is we'll do um, another run and this will show us 52, we started with 75, so we did 23 galaxies tonight in two hours. And that's really fun that we were able to clip through these really fast. Thank you guys for making this. Ray, thanks for the encouragement. Jaffo, you're very kind. Ricky, thanks for the encouragement. Stu, you're a great friend. Thanks for all the research you do for us, Stu. Right, another one in the bottom left, and that is... Um, let's see, this was 42, that's 4206, NGC 4216, and that's 4206, right, 4206 here, I think, we could do deep sky image annotation, could we? Oh, I stand corrected, that's 4222, 4206 is above it. So here's 4206, that's NGC 4222. Amazing stuff, and appreciate you guys being part of this. God bless you all, and we'll look forward to seeing you next clear night, usually one night a week. This week we snuck in three, and you were here with us for all of them. God bless. We'll see you next time. Take care. Good night from Emerald Hill Skies.